Hey y'all, what's going on? I am finally doing something that is my dream. And that is appropriate because we're sitting in the shop with Ryan, uh, Car Collector 2, and something that was his dream since I've gotten to know him. And as you all see in the video that I've, I've made before this, that the, the goal is to go to the shops with these great people and this great hobby across the nation and and get some of the stories of the shop owners and their passion and what they love about this hobby and some of the, the great stories that they have because that's all I've ever heard when I go to these shops across the U.S. And it's really appropriate to sit with him who our friendship began exclusively, specifically with cars. Yep. And this was five, six years ago? Yeah. Uh, early 2014 and and I'll let you tell the story kind of how we met and then we'll launch into lots of different types of questions for him and about how he went from flipping cards on eBay as a young one to his place <laughs> so Jimmy and I actually met uh, through Instagram uh, it's actually kind of a crazy story um, so I was going to pick up a Julius Randall immaculate premium patch auto um, from a local collector on the other side of town and on the same day I picked this card up um, unfortunately I lost a good friend in a car accident that morning um, who uh, just got in a car accident uh, hit a light pole and was killed um, it was actually the same day uh, Jimmy and I had met and became friends uh, and I always just thought that was a an act of God um, considering you know I lost a, a good friend and uh, met someone uh, who had become such a you know a big part of my life. Uh, Jimmy and I met through Instagram. And our friendship developed on there. Uh, ended up was uh, it was actually in my wedding last year in October uh, when I got married. So uh, it, yeah, it's, it's been uh, it's been a couple years, but yeah, I started through Instagram and uh, just became uh, lifelong friends uh, throughout the time. So. It's been, it's been great. And it was crazy because we also, like, we had spoken through Instagram. We talked on the phone, Instagram, eventually, when he was going through this difficult time. And it was over a Julius Randle, immaculate RPA, Lakers rookie premium patch that I still own and will never not own. Yeah. And then we met at the National. The National. Yeah. And during that National, it was the first National I'd ever been to, 38 years old at the time never been to a national this guy's navigating me through it i am utterly overwhelmed in this and we end up going both going to the panini vip party yep, and you can tell what happened when we were there with the picture and all that with what picture remember the picture that they put on across oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah so jimmy and i uh i had never been to the vip party jimmy had never been to the national didn't really know what it was i'd heard about it um Decided we were both going to end up going to it. Went to the party. There was, uh, we got to meet Tyson, Kareem, uh, Bobby Portis, Ricky Williams. It was a great time. It was in Lambeau, or uh, Soldier Field in Chicago, yep. like the VIP suite. Um, but like we had sat down to like open packs. I mean, it's, it was kind of tight in there. Um, and they give you all these packs and stuff, and everybody's sitting around ripping them. And so Jimmy and I uh, sat on the floor uh, and kind of like near the back, and we we're like ripping our gold packs right next to each other. And Panini actually took a picture of it and then, like, put it on their website and all their social media. It was, like, recap of the Panini VIP party. And, like, Jimmy and I were on the, on the front page of it. So, like, it, was, uh, it was really cool. On the floor, like two kids. <laughs> like, at National, you see when everybody's leaned up against the wall. And we're on the floor ripping gold packs. And all of a sudden, we're, we're spread across all their social media. And that was a pretty cool moment. Like, kind of encapsulated that first time we got to hang out. Because we hung out the whole time. Yep. And, and that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Yeah. So the questions I want to ask are the stuff that I was asking him that weekend, which is what got you started in this hobby first, and then how does this lead to being a small business owner, a store owner? But, but where did it start? Was it your father? Was it your family? Was it friends? Yeah, so in... Uh the late 90s Pokemon was a big thing and that's kind of how I got into like the card game uh, Pokemon cards were like all at school everybody had them uh, but they quickly got banned because kids were stealing them 
So they weren't allowed, we weren't allowed to Pokemon cards. Illegal Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then I had a, a friend of mine uh, who uh, was like, his grandparents always bought him tons of like boxes of cards. So this was like 2000, and, 2000 2001. Right. So I remember ripping stuff. And that, those actually turned out to be pretty good classes. Yeah. Um, but I remember like him ripping boxes of those and like jersey cards and stuff like that. And I just remember getting into it then and just collecting a little bit through time. Uh, and they got really, really hardcore into it in like 2006 um, when like Reggie Bush was a rookie. Um, this kind of progressed. I got really big on like online forums. Right. So like sports card forum, blowout cards, had a, right. a website, um, like back at Marketplace. Uh, and then that transitioned into Instagram in 2013. Right. And then yeah, here we go. Instagram just kind of took off. It just kind of became like, I, honestly, Instagram, like, like I know you always talk about this, how Instagram was never really meant to be anything. It just kind of happened by chance. Yeah. Instagram for me was ended up, I, I honestly wanted to use it as a solution to a photo bucket. Right. Where you could host pictures, yep. delete stuff as they went away, and show people what you had for trade. Right. So I used it as like a photo, like, hey, this is just some of what I have, you know, come look at what I got. And then I could copy that for like online forums. Right. Well, then Instagram and social media got really big, and I had a ton of stuff on there, and it just, it kind of... Kind of took off. Were you doing lots of dealing on Instagram? I mean, were you selling and trading? Not or? early on. Um, it was just it was mostly just taking pictures and just posting them. Right. Um, and then in time, started dealing more. Right. Um, but initially, it wasn't meant to be dealing. It was just meant to just post pictures and use them as like a uh, like photo source um, where I could post stuff that I had for trade and I could link that to online platforms. So being in Columbus, Ohio clearly a big football town especially mid 2000s well forever here it's no yeah. different than being in Lexington Kentucky yeah. for basketball cool. I mean was your focus straight to football like was that what was pulling you in or but that's also LeBron Cleveland time yeah like what I guess what was the real hook I mean you see the jerseys and all those come out and then I always you say up, you get hardcore yeah, right yeah. so what made you hardcore yeah football for sure um just being around Columbus and being a Buckeye my whole life, it was always Ohio State stuff. So right. football was always my, uh, it was like what, what brought me in. And when you started doing the the, the trading, the flipping, mm -hmm. and making, like, was it more of a, I'm going for Ohio State guys, PC, I want to be a collector, and then that, that became a business? Or was it purely entrepreneurial spirit in the in the form of sports cards, something that you loved just having yeah. grown up in Columbus. Yeah, uh, well, when I like when I first first got like hardcore to it, like in two thousand six, it was always I wanted to pull a good card to get more cards. Right. So it was always get something that would allow me to get more trade up. So yeah, so it was always a uh, it was more of an entrepreneurial thing from the beginning. I always wanted to flip things. If I sold this and I was able to get take one card to two cards right. that were better, that was that was what I wanted to do. So I definitely had the entrepreneur from the start. Um, collect the collecting thing didn't really take off until I got a little bit older and could afford more. Right. Um, but it, it started as entrepreneurial. And so when did you get uh, going through that entrepreneurial spirit? It's, it switches from from cards to money at some point, right? Yeah. Because you say I want to get this card to get more cards, and then you're trying to sell it. I mean, when did the when did the mindset or the idea of I want to be a shop owner? Yeah come in and like what kind of shops were you going to back then for this where were you going to shows were you going to shops were you just doing it all because i remember talking to bates yeah. about you i was like who is this guy you know mm -hmm. like is he cool and he was like oh yeah he's awesome he was always hanging around at the yeah. shop or this place and he was he you could tell he had a grind to him so when did that hook and kind of switch you so when I, when I was younger i did it all so like I was on forums every day. I went to How every, every show, probably like 13, 12 or 13. Right. Every show that was in Columbus. There was one, I mean, every weekend in Columbus. Really? Every Saturday. So I was at a show every Saturday. Uh, there was one that was really, really good. It was at a Veterans Memorial downtown. Mm -hmm. um, it was about every quarter. They still do that show. It's just, it's not in the same location. Um, but I was at, you know, a show every weekend. Then I'd come home and I'd be on uh, blowout, blowout card forums. I mean, right. I have a thousand feedback on blowout forums, and I probably haven't made a deal on there in a year. Well, yeah. And I was, I was big time doing deals on there. Um, but like, I think when I really tried to, tra when I really transitioned from 
hey, this is really cool and I'm getting a lot of cards to, hey, this could be real, real, real money. Right. Is like when Instagram took off. Right. So when Instagram took off and I was doing like, uh, like breaks right. or like razzes or things like that. And like there was serious money. I mean, right. like when the razzing market took off on Instagram, it was like everybody wanted to razz. Oh, yeah. And when I had a couple thousand followers, it was like, I mean, there were Friday nights where we were doing three, four thousand dollars in razzes. A night. A night. And you're like, holy cow, like you right. can move everything. Right. Just so, uh, so that was really when I saw the transition from like, hey, this could be like a collecting point to like a, like this has serious monetary implications. So, I think because the way I think about it, I think it's invaluable to the who, who's the next Ryan Johnson, the next RBI crew, the next Andy at IndyCar Exchange. For them to hear your perspective of doing that, what was the most difficult part of going from collecting into the money, and those nights you were doing three thousand a night, and then you're like, well, because eventually you're going to make the decision down the road mm-hmm. where. I will leave my job. I'm yeah. a college graduate. I'm going to leave my job. I'm going to take the risk, and I'm going to do this. But that still started back here. What was the most difficult part of ramping that up or doing the razzle? Where, where was that? the friction did you feel, feel the most? That, and what I'm shooting for is when, when did you think, do I really want to do this for the money or not? Um. I don't know if I had a date when I said, like, do I want to do this for the money? I think when I saw how big Instagram could be, that's when I really realized, like, this this could totally be full-time. Right. I think when I, because uh, I think you know that, like, most of our wedding uh, was paid for through card money. Like right. Flipping things, buying and selling, just, I mean, we were engaged oh, for yeah. two years. Uh, and, like, flipping stuff to pay for our, our wedding was kind of when I realized, like, hey, I can do this. This could totally be full time. Right. Um, but I don't really think I had a day where I was like, uh, like this is the, this is when I want to make it for sure my full time job. Right. Um, but I think though, paying for the wedding and then that grind for eighteen to twenty four months, when it's like you have this to pay for, this wedding to pay for, and we don't want to put it on credit cards. We don't have the assistance to do right. it. Like you have to do it. There's a lot of. I mean, you gave up weekends. You gave up. You know. Yeah. S- Every night, you know, it was, because that was when I was also in, like, right after I was, uh, that same time period was when I was in school. So it was like, you know, you work for, uh, I was working te- four tens, I was working right. tens, I was going to school full time, then I was coming home and, you know, flipping it's cars, exhausting. and it was it was exhausting. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I have a specific date in mind. I just wonder what, what then, like, you, you, you graduate college, you start going to work, and you're like, you know what, I can go do the cars full time. Yeah. I can do it. And you felt confident enough. And it sounds like the wedding, grinding that out is what gave you confidence. Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. I can be successful for at sure. that. It, is that the most difficult time you've had it? And I guess what I'm, I'm thinking is, was it making the leap? Or now just saying, after making the leap, ramping up to this? What was, That's a, you know? The leap was the hardest part, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's like, when you're an entrepreneur and you do it like new you do cards full time there's there's no guarantee right like you have to make money you don't have that right. that paycheck coming in every two weeks like benefits aren't there like you're not saving for your yep. your, your future like on your own like you you're doing a full time gig um, so that that was harder um, but then like when you start this it's like if like it's kind of like we talked about this before like online classes versus in like in, in person classes right. like when you're when you uh like with the shop, like I have to be here, I have to do this full time. But like when I was just doing entrepreneur, like like uh, full time cards, and I was like traveling to shows and I was doing yeah. that stuff, it was you had to like make yourself do it. Like I got to get up and list cards, I got to get up and ship cards, got to right. you know price out group breaks. I've got to right. you've got to always be looking for like the next thing. Um, so that that's been a challenge, but for sure getting myself to understand that I could do this full time and make that initially right. that was the hardest. See that. And that, I think that's cool because that's the inspirational part to me, which is once you you go through that part and you realize you can do it. Yeah. It seems like it, there's a difference between there's a philosophical component, like can I do this? Mm-hmm. And then there's a tactical component, which yeah. is I'm going to take the leap and then now, now I've got to do X, Y, and Z to get to this. Yeah. And it's definitely like, like, again, the whole lead up to can I do this full time is tough because most people, like, again, a lot of the people that I, that I was closest with, don't understand the, the 
the, the monetary implication in cards. Right. They don't understand like that it's big business. So when you tell someone like, hey, like I'm thinking about quitting my job where I make you know decent money, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know buy and sell baseball cards. They're like, dude, stay, you know you should keep this job. Like right. that, like it's not realistic. Right. So like you have all these people in your ear telling you you can't do this. Yep. But they don't know. So it's just like it's outside like it's outside feedback, and that that makes it a whole lot tougher when it's like these are the you know ten people I'm closest with. And none of them think it's realistic. So it's like, that's, you know, it's, it's hard because you got to tell yourself like, no, they're wrong. Like, I know I can do this. Right. So it's like, and step out in faith yeah. a little bit there because yeah. it was, it was like, tough. it was easy to see you had the grind and the intelligence to do it. It was just a question of when I thought I knew you, that's what you want to do. Cause you yeah. talked about it so much, but you were good at it and you had the passion around it. Not just the cards, but like you have great insight, I think. And, uh, not just prospecting players and all that, but but just a way to navigate the people in the market. And I always thought that was amazing because I did, and I was just <laughs> buying Kentucky stuff and goofing off that. and running around. You were buying a Brown and Jordan a couple of years early. I got that right. Uh, that's for sure. Um, so I wonder, I always think that there's great rewarding experience in this beyond the monetary value. Oh. And, and I know you've got some stories like that. And I wonder... What's I know the shop has only been open five months, right? So yeah. you're relatively new in this, and it's going well. But just in your life with cards, what what are some of the rewarding moments that stick out to you? Where it's man, I'm so glad I do this. I'm so glad I'm part of this hobby. I'm so glad I'm involved with it. Is there anything or you know, a few that stick out in your mind? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, a lot of it comes down to, like, uh, the attention from, like, Instagram, right? Like, having that big account has definitely, like, uh, helped me, like, with, like, causes for, like, getting attention out there to things that need it. So, like, uh, I remember Cross Nord did that uh, mm-hmm. toy drive that one summer. Yep. So I posted it on Instagram. I was like, hey, guys, like, let's raise money for this, and we'll buy all these toys. And I actually ended up, like, driving them down there. With yep. you. I had a bunch of people on Instagram help donate to that. So that, that was, was super awesome. cool. It was awesome. Um, uh, there was another um, a friend of mine that's also local. Um, his mother actually had passed away from like a brain aneurysm, um, yeah. and I had posted it on Instagram because uh, they were looking for like funeral help costs. Uh, he was like selling cards. Like I posted that on there, like, "Hey, right. let's try to raise some money for that." That ended up going pretty well. Um, ended up giving them some money for that, um, and then the toy drive last year for Christmas was yeah huge. I would have never guessed it would have been so big. Explain that. Um, Basically, uh, partnered with, uh, like, Panini Help, donate some stuff, and then um, reached out to Mike Kafka, uh, who's the quarterback coach for the Chiefs, um, and actually helped try to get some, uh, got some things signed by Mahomes, Travis Kels, and uh, Tyree Kill, and basically got them back, and some stuff from Panini, and basically put this huge, like, plot of, uh, like, free prizes away. And uh, created an Amazon wish list, and anyone who bought a toy off the wish list and put their name in the like the thank you or the gift receipt, right? Uh, it would automatically be sent to my house, and then we'd get the gift receipt and we'd put you on a list. We basically collect toys for a local organization, right? Um, and we came up with like I think it was like two hundred, two hundred eighty or three hundred eighty toys. So like, you didn't get any mail for a little while. Is what you're saying. <laughs> we had Amazon deliver. The UPS, USPS was delivering mail twice a day for a two-week period. It was crazy. And we lived, lived in that little town home, so it was uh, it was packed. But that was a huge success. So that was really, really cool. Being able to take two truckloads of toys uh, to a local charity was, was pretty cool. I think it's unbelievable when it always – it doesn't shock me. In a, like, I didn't expect there to be this many good people away, but just – and exciting like the community yeah. always jumps in it's, yeah. a, it's oh, such yeah. a giving every time we always see these trimming scandals and this and that and you hear about the scamming and all that but it, it it's incredible yeah. how responsive it is quickly yeah in this community i feel like so i think that's that's really amazing i i wonder where do you see this going like what's what's the dream right there, there's something i always did with um when I was a teacher and with students and with some of my friends I was counseling say, my dad always did this with me. He's like, two, five, and ten. Yeah. Two years, five years, ten years. 
where do you see yourself or this shop? That's a good question. I've actually been asked that recently, and I really think I need to like uh, sit down and think about this because if you would have asked me like you know a year ago what the goal was, this was the goal, right? And it, but like this shop like kind of just came out of nowhere. This opportunity came out of nowhere, right? And it just kind of like threw everything for like a loop. I mean, it's awesome and it's worked out well, but this. I mean, I didn't expect this to happen until I was like 40, you know, like up until I was a little bit older. Right. I just, uh, being 26 and owning a card store, that, I mean, this was, this is what I always wanted to do. And You'd I just, be as grizzled veteran by the time yeah. you're my age. You're, you'll so, have this down. Just so, don't be one of those old jaded guys. Yeah, I know. Right? I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just continue to grow this. Um, I think I would like to be eventually be in a space that is bigger than this. There's right, only about 550 square feet here, so right. it's not super, super big. Um, more space is ideal, because if you have more space, it's typically a sign of success. Right. So um, I think if I'm going from this spot to something three five, three to five years down the road, um, that would be the But goal. do you want the same type of setup? Do you want singles and wax and all this, or do you want to be like David Adams and Blowout and Steel City? Or like, I definitely is like, there something that like you'd be like, I want to... I really always felt more pulled this way. I liked, uh, I think when we saw uh, Nick's in Dallas. Yeah. I Nick's really like, yeah, I really like that setup, that whole, I like having a variety. So I like offering, you know, Pokemon. I like offering singles. I like offering right. boxes. I like offering everything. Jerseys. Yeah. And so I, I definitely want to expand the memorabilia stuff. I mean, I want to have a little bit of everything in the shop. Right. That's always been key for me. Um, but I think in the future, being able to run like breaks out of here, be able to uh, do like signings in right. here, just that'd be great. Yeah, different things like that. So I, I think um, I don't have any intentions to, to go away from like singles and or wax. Like I, I definitely want both. You definitely right. need both. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just more space to be able to do other things like the breaks and right. uh, signings and just things like that. So you got the wax. We've had some fun opening some wax actually yeah. today. Is there, it's only been five months, it's young, and I'm sure when, when you are my age, you'll have lots of stories about this, but is there a craziest, what's the craziest card you've seen a customer pull in the shop or that they bought in the shop and come back and called you about? Oh, man. Is there one that sticks out? I mean, that little kid today that came in. It, yeah, Carter has some good luck. Um I mean, he bought two packs of Donruss and pulled a one-on-one -on -one Ronald Acuna, and it was, like, the first week I was open. Um, I start seeing the customer. Uh, it actually wasn't even my box, I'll be honest. Um, but I had a customer rip a box of Prism first off the line basketball. Really? And hit Zion out of 18, RJ Auto out of 18, and a Cam Reddish out of 10 Auto in the same box. Same box? The same box in here. I've um, heard those can be loaded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You knew all too well. Um, but, yeah, that was pretty cool, but... I mean, a couple, a couple big cards like right. Elias Pettersson, uh, Acetate Young Gun. Oh like yeah, $1, $1, $1, those are card. big. So some cool cards, but nothing, uh, nothing crazy, crazy yet. But we're working on it. Is well, that kind of just on a side note. What's the craziest one you've ever pulled in your life out of a pack? The Luca. L the Luca. Uh, Luca Doncic, uh, National Treasures, uh, first off the line patch auto at a twenty. So. And you sold it for? Or uh, you're allowed to say. Uh, you know, I'd say a lot. Uh, yeah, north of 15. North, north of 15. Yeah, north of 15. If there is a young Ryan Johnson 2.0 out there that, that wants this, that feels that same, remember how you felt, especially back when I first met you, like this, like you had that passion for it. Yeah. What's the advice you'd give him? What would you say? Like looking back at what you've experienced over the last five years, the ups and downs, be it Martavius Bryant prospecting hey, Martavius or... Martavius Bryant, David Cobb. Yeah, but like who is, what would you say, hand on the shoulder, like, all right, dude, I know where you are and yeah. I know where you're going, but let me tell you. That's that's a good question. That's um, my goal. I want to ask a yeah, good question. No, that's a, that's a good question. Not something I've really thought about. Um I would say trust your gut. That's a big one. Right. Like I said, when you have a bunch of people telling you, you know, you can't do this or you can't do that. I think it's key that you, like, if you know deep down inside that you can do something, uh, I think that's really big. Um, never be afraid to admit when you're wrong. Um, that's a big thing. That's a, something I learned uh, that's very important, that you're definitely not always right. Right. This is uh, something you're always learning. There's, I don't know, 
anything about it, anything really right. in the grand scheme of things. So uh, just knowing that other people may know more about something and just being able right. to uh, be criticized, uh, get, you know, that's constru- constructive feedback, uh, always be growing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a big thing. So, yeah, I don't think it would be more card related. I think it would be more like life related. Um, right. And how you can apply that to this business. Uh, I think in a business like this where it, so much of it is based on reading people yeah, and knowing it's not just transactional. I mean, it can sure. be in a way, but in this thing, you're dealing with heroes and childhood emotions and all these different things that applying the real life wisdom and dealing with people and knowing what they like and how and how to talk to somebody and to yeah. help comfort them. And sometimes you need to knock up, knock off a few dollars off something. Sure. And sometimes you need to charge full price. Yeah. But I think that's really wise because I think a lot of people can fall in the trap of it's just eBay. It's just like eBay. Like you're not, it's that in-person piece yeah. that is really key. Sure. And that's where you got the biggest win. Sure. I feel like, yeah. um, that's always a big one for me. Um, Favorite, I think these things you've got to ask if you're going to get to know somebody in the car world. What's your favorite team? Uh, Ohio State, by my Ohio State, State book, guys. Yeah. Number one. For sure. By NBA? My... I would say LeBron. I would, whoever LeBron plays for, at this point, I kind of want to see LeBron win more. Right. Um, especially since he brought the title to Cleveland. That was, you know, crazy. But now that LeBron, uh, just being to eight straight finals and – only one in three. I would, I would rather see LeBron win. So whoever right. LeBron's for. So I'd say the Lakers right now, but I just want to see LeBron win. NFL? Patriots. Patriots. Now, that is odd for people <laughs> around here. I know. I I've know. seen people go sideways when, when, they, when you know. say this. So what made you that Patriots fan? So my dad grew up uh, flying back from, like, lived in uh, Orange County in Florida and then lived in, like, Columbus. Like, in, right. they, they moved a lot when they were a kid, but it was typically back and forth between those two. Uh, and just hated the Dolphins growing up, just living down there. Um, so just it became the Patriots, and that's when they were terrible. I mean, that was, you know, the John Hanna days. I mean, that was Steve Grogan, and they weren't very good. Right. Um, and, of course, when I started getting into football, it was like, I mean, I was 7, it was 99. Right. Uh, you know, 7, 8, it was 99, 2000. Um, so I was young, and then the Patriots start winning. Yeah, so. I mean that's all the right to me. Like it so. checks all the right heritage boxes. So, I mean I've like got the father. I've got the original baby pictures and the Patriots gear, so it's not like that's it. It's not a. It's not a right by accident that I. Uh, but that I was. You're not Patriots Yankees, there. Patriots, yeah. Duke, like all like Kentucky, yeah. like all across. But it's like the... Lakers, Patriots, Buckeyes. It's I I can I can I can see the. The picture that may paint. Oh but. no! You, if you're within a hundred miles of Columbus, Buckeye, you're yeah. locked. Like, so yeah, that's awesome. What is the favorite card that you own and why? Mm. It's yours. It's never leaving your collection. The shop goes bankrupt. Everything's gone. It doesn't matter. You're taking this card with you. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a couple. Um, you have more than one. I've said it before that like my Donnie Nikki collection would be like the last thing I would ever move. It probably is the worth the least amount of money that right I, that I own. Um, Explain but, who Donnie Nicky is. So Donnie Nicky is a player that was on the Ohio State National Championship team in 2002. Right. Um, went to the same high school I did. Um, his mother was my art teacher. And I, I met him a couple times when I was in like grade school. He would come in and sign some stuff. And this was when I was getting into cards. Right. So like meeting him when he had cards was like really cool. Right. Um, like I said, went to Ohio State, was on the National Championship team in 2002, then played in the NFL for seven years. Right. Um, so like – Collecting him was like that was one of the people I first remember collecting. Right. That, that was like the start. I remember sitting in Tuttle Mall parking lot in two thousand and like three, ripping packs of Sage Hit football and pulling like a Brad Banks jersey card from like Sage Hit. Um, so I just I remember searching for him. Like that's the first player I remember searching for. Right. I mean, sixteen years ago. So for sure that would be the 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 guy. Like if I had to get rid of everything else but something, it would be that those. 25 or 40 cards that original pc yeah, that when sure. you feel that first like i have to get more of this yeah i have to I, get more yeah. of him we're in in that fur and he only has cards produced from two sage products right like he doesn't have any nfl uniform cards right so like they don't ever show up so there'll be a couple on ebay that are like 20 dollars that are like two dollar yeah. cards but um, they're just you don't ever see them so it's mm-hmm. it's the ultimate like quest to find the best stuff because right. they just don't ever show up um, that's really, you said you had more. Any, who else besides Donnie Nicky? Yeah, is there I mean, any other one that sticks out? 
I mean, my Braxton Miller stuff, I mean, I, like, uh, I was at Ohio State. I was a Buckeye when they won the national title in 2014. I can't so, imagine. Like, yeah, it was, so, like, Braxton Miller was, like, we talked about this going to the game. Like, Braxton Miller was, like, the first quarterback that, like, mm-hmm. Urban had when, like, Ohio State really shifted from, like, Jim Trestle to, like, an NFL right. factory with Urban. Yeah. Um, so, I, I always loved Braxton Miller. I mean, just, dude was electric on the football right. field. There's so many examples. So, I collected him first. Right. Um, so some of my like, Ohio State logo patches, um, but then a lot of the stuff like I mean, I got from you like when you came to trade night last year, um, like the Nick Bosa, Dwayne Haskins, right. Paris Campbell, Triple Auto. Just my Ohio State stuff would would for sure be the stuff I would I would keep. And I think that's a good actually segue because I think the last thing I wanted to just ask you about was was trade night, mm-hmm. and to let you tell some of the origins of that and also what you have done with it, which is far more than I thought. And then just because hopefully some of these folks will be there yeah. next year because this is fun. And this was just, as you well know, and you can tell them, it's a passion project that's yeah. turned into something that you really hoped it would be. Yeah. And so you can tell them what trade night is. and So, man, trade night. Uh, trade night is a blast, but it, uh, trade night started in Atlantic City in 20. 20- 2016 one of those two years i think it's 2015 um jimmy called me a couple months or about a month before the the trade night or the national had happened and said i'm thinking about renting out a room at the at at the national where people can come and hang out and trade with people that they know through instagram well that sounds like a really cool idea he's like There'll be like some drinks, some snacks. We'll just we'll get a big room with a bunch of tables. It won't be to sell anything. It won't be to get your email. It won't be anything. It'll just be come and hang out. I was like, well, that sounds really cool. So it was in Atlantic City. And it was in a hotel. Um, it was probably twelve hundred square feet. I mean, yeah, it wasn't much. Yeah, it wasn't much. It had uh, it had like nine tables. Um, there was like Cracker Jacks. There was like drinks, some chips. Uh, it was just everyone hanging out. Uh, it was three nights, so the first night was Thursday, and I think 20 people showed up. Like, tops, maybe including the person bringing the drink. Yeah. <laughs> like, 20 so there, people. There wasn't a lot of people, uh, but word quickly got out, and then it was, fr- so Jimmy did it for three nights, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Uh, Friday night had a lot more people with it, there was probably yeah. 100 people. And then Saturday night, we actually ended, ended up going to Panini Party, so we didn't end up going to it. Right. Um, but heard it had a pretty good turnout, so... First year, it had uh, a lot of success. Mm-hmm. And it was in Chicago in this uh, smaller room, and it was packed. Packed, packed. You could not Did walk. Did not in. expect that. There were people in the hallways. There was people in front of, like, the elevators. I mean, it was it was right off the elevator right. in Chicago uh, at the Hilton, and it was packed. Um, it was a great turnout in a much smaller room. Um, it was just it was a wonderful time. We got to meet a lot of cool people. Um and then all the guys from Instagram that yeah. you know their names, like today, so cool it came in. Yeah. I'd never seen, I didn't know who it was. Okay. It was one of those, and it, now it's oh, that's Andrew. Yeah. But the goal was we all interact with each other online, and it's always like Fox Breaks or Kirk like the dude, Kentucky basketball, and all you like. And then all of a sudden, it's like if you just get in the same room, that's going to be fun. And then you also have the component of, Everybody's always yelling at each other, has a bad day or whatever. And it's like, wait a second. Stop getting so worked up over cards. We're going to have fun. If you just sat in the same room, you probably really like each other. Yeah. And then we saw that. I mean, you could see people being like, dude, I talk to you all the time. And then yeah. they get, they're getting tight. Yeah. But they were, that whole goal was going back to transactional versus philosophical. Like, that was a philosophical. And then, then we'll have all the fun transactions. Yeah going on but then just to pick up a little bit like from chicago that got bigger than we thought we're like oh my gosh this is going to be huge but then i take a job mm-hmm. where i cannot come down in the summer but there's no way we can let trick night go so it was like you've been there since the beginning take it and do your thing so yeah so uh fortunately jimmy couldn't make it and kind of asked to take it over and like we talked about before, the biggest thing I quickly realized was um, we have a lot of attention on Instagram and you have a lot of followers. And my whole thought was, if, like, how big can we make this event be by 
giving back to the people that are going to show up and support the yeah. event. So my thought was, let's reach out to the companies that would that are card related, that would want to put their brand in front of this event. So we hit up, we hit up everybody. So it was Panini and Upper Deck, uh, Brothers and Cards, Indie Card Exchange, RBI. Mm -hmm. We hit up shops. We hit up Ultra Pro, PSA. I mean, we hit up everybody and was like, hey, uh, would you be willing to donate some prizes uh, for this event? Um, in exchange for like we'll tag you on all these events we'll put your logo on everything right um, there'll be a lot of people here this will get a lot of attention and sure enough we had a bunch of companies say yes um, and we got like five thousand dollars worth of prizes to give away yeah um, surely just just to give away to people. take it like, so uh, I mean we had kids like we had a kid show up on his birthday with his mom and his mom had won and his favorite player was like Deshaun Watson, and he won like a Deshaun Watson signed jersey. Like, was, that's the was, best stuff in the world. It was so when crazy. that happens, that's um, the best stuff. It was crazy, and I just love seeing that line out there because when I came yeah. back this year yeah. and saw it, when so I this year was it, definitely different. Um, we've tried to we tried to work out some of the kinks uh, logistically, right? Because the first year it was always just me on a microphone, just like announcing, like pulling a ticket out and giving away prizes. Right. But this year we kind of made those bags where you got your prize when you walked in. Right. So we didn't have to be on a microphone all night, so we could kind of, like, mingle and yeah. like, names the faces. Thank God. Um, that was the best. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, so it went really well. We had about 350 people show up. And then we did it in Chicago. And we knew, going into this, we, ta we talked about this, right. that being attached to the convention center meant there would be a lot of people. A ton. So we had to find a space that was much bigger. Um, we got a 10,000 foot... 10,000 square foot ballroom uh, right next door at the Hyatt um, and it was what was, it? what was the max in there that night uh, just over 1100 that's crazy to think of 20 people in Atlantic City yeah four years yeah you know, four years earlier with like some pretzels and Diet Pepsi yeah. to 1100 people in a ballroom yeah. and that was him <laughs> taking it up to the next level and which is really appropriate the smart detail intelligent yeah. guy versus like the vision like idea guy out here doing this but that was really special because yeah. you saw that enjoyment and it's always after the show it's never meant yeah. to get in the way of the show it's Perfect. show is closed at night we've just done all this stuff all day yeah come hang out come share come show and no cost you never have to do anything but walk there and that and like seeing it go to that is awesome. Who knows what we're gonna yeah, do this year? Now that I'm half time and I you know. got time, I can't wait. It's, it's gonna be, gonna be awesome. But um, I guess last thing, uh, any any other comments that you can think of for young collectors, for old collectors like the guy that just came in, getting back in the game. I guess that the most important things in your mind about this hobby that you could share. Mm, man, that's a loaded question. We might have to do a part two. Yeah, we might have to do a part two. Um, oh man, that's a good question. I definitely wasn't prepared for that one. I don't know. I can give you some time to think. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you mean like about the hobby or just your approach or a way to approach this, this life, this whether you're a shop owner whether you're a collector whether you're a flipper is there anything that you would say this is most important not for just young collectors who want to be the next Ryan Johnson but for everybody the old guys getting back in the game yeah you know, I, I would say uh, like don't ever take it too seriously enjoy it there we but, go yeah like it's it's meant in, uh, in its most basic form it's meant to be fun and enjoyable and shared like you said at the national like shared with others uh, if you take it too seriously and like make it strictly, a, that's why I try to do the, the the PC stuff still, even while owning a shop. Like, yeah. if you just if you take it too seriously, it just it can add way too much stress and kind of mm -hmm. like take the fun out of it and can really drain you. Right. There's been times where it's like you don't really focus on like why you got into it in the first place. Right. You just focus on like, hey, how much money can I make doing this or doing that? Right. So, uh, if you don't ever like slow down and like see like why you got into this in the first place, right. it can like really like set you back or like. Add more jaded. stress, yeah. Add more stress to it than you than you really need to. So, I think that's really awesome that you do that. You mentioned that before that you PC still a little bit on yeah. the side. And I meet plenty of, of people that are like I I don't PC anything. It's business and all that. Yeah. They don't seem as happy. Like 
totally understand that you've got to run a business, yeah. right? That's for sure. But I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive. Sure. I think you can do that. And I always feel like the, the hobby owners, I think like RBI with his LeBron collection, it's yeah. incredible, all that. And you with your Ohio State stuff, that like keeping that little part of it, it, and it doesn't mean you have to be a bad businessman, yeah, right? Yeah. But I think that's important. I always really admire that, that you did yeah. that. Um, anything else you want to tell the folks about your shop? Uh, no, I'm in uh, 4026 Broadway in Grove City. I'm about 15 minutes south of Columbus. So uh, currently working on getting an online presence up and running a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, mostly uh, in person or uh, through like Instagram or eBay. Well, thanks. This is my first shot at doing this, but I knew right where I wanted to start mm -hmm. with somebody I call one of my best friends on this planet um, that all started through this hobby. You know, obviously I'm an old guy. He's a young guy, but that common ground and passion. And then I think that the wisdom that he displays about don't take too seriously and make it. It's about the people and and being able to know when you're wrong, admit it, and just to enjoy the people. This is always something that attracted me to, I want to be around that guy. That's the kind of guy in this hobby I want to be around and meet. And that's always meant a lot to me. And it's just cool that on a really tough day for him, five, six years ago, over a Julius Randall RPA, here we are sitting together after being in weddings together and different things like that, um, all because of the hobby. So just wanted to share that with you all. And excuse me for not having microphones or video editing or anything like that. I'll get there eventually, but why not just be what we always want to be, which is authentic and genuine and appreciate you. Thank you. That's good work.